Welcome to Talk Around Riyadh, the Wheel of Time showcast. I am your host, Joe Perry, here with my co-host, Jen Isgro, and not Tom Kakosa. Tom is not feeling well tonight. So, Jen, how are you doing? Are you feeling was, comfortable without Tom? I'm, I'm okay. I'm a, I'm a little off, but I think I'll manage it. I was really expecting you to say Tom, and it threw me off, even though I knew he wasn't here. I'm just so used to hearing the opening the same way every week. <laughs> um, well, they're saying in chat, Tom is not a victim of the earthquake. He's just not feeling well. But we did have an earthquake in the Northeast today. It was crazy. We never have earthquakes. I can think of one other one that I remember, and it wasn't even as bad as this. I believe it was a 4.8. Uh, yeah, so that was, pretty, that was pretty crazy for New York. But uh, we're all yeah. okay. I don't think there's anybody who got hurt that we've heard of or any damage at all, but uh, it was exciting. So that was it my was, day today. It was exciting for a minute or so. Um, and then I went on with my life. Yeah. We have to do your fashion. <laughs> oh, what's that? Like, an earthquake? Oh, no. Anyway. That happens. All right. Yeah, I need to catch the bus. My we father, I'm sorry. My father in law was like, I didn't even hear it. I was drying my hair. There was an earthquake. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean you didn't hear it? Okay. While Sorry, Mother Nature. Have... Can't hear you over the hot air. In my ear. While we don't have Tom here, you can hear that we do have some other people here who are going to... Uh, well, actually, you guys were going to be here even when if Tom was here or not. It's not like we called you in last minute. But uh, we are joined by Josh and Andrew from the Black Tower podcast. Welcome, Josh and Andrew. Thank you for being here tonight. I want you guys to know, first off, I'm grateful to be here. Um, love, love traveling over to your show. It's fantastic, and I hope Tom gets feeling better. But I'm not surprised, you know, we have that effect on a lot of people. So taint <laughs> is, it comes for us all, and, you know, we just got to do it the best we can with it. Yeah. Hey, doing it, Drew. <laughs> doing good. Doing good. I had my, uh, my second ever dentist appointment today in, like, <laughs> an embarrassing 10 oh, years. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought you were going to say your second ever, and then yeah. that, and that no, was really no, no. worried for a minute. I had some follow-up no, questions. I, I had my first one, like, last week, and uh, they were like, yeah, you're really good. I have like I had, like, a super tiny cavity. Like, it was like a 10-minute a full procedure, like, fix and fill, and that's what they did today. Right. But uh, the dentist, she was just like, I can't believe your teeth are in this good condition, not seeing a dentist for, like, 10 years, and I'm like, me neither. <laughs> I was going to lose a couple, but who knows? His, his humble brag for the evening. He's got Oral hygiene is important. Exceptional folks. teeth. Exceptional, exceptional <laughs> teeth. It's, so, it's years of swishing with tainted whiskey. That's right. <laughs> the alcohol, it keeps it clean, right? Yeah, yeah. that's why they so put burn. alcohol in Listerine. The that's burn's the good. Yeah, that's true. It's all true, right? It's in the mouthwash, so, so it should keep it. Right. So, guys, give us, uh, for those of uh, our listeners who don't know who the Black Tower podcast is, which it's probably not anybody, but tell us a little bit about your podcast. You know, we're just a couple of dudes who like the Wheel of Time and uh, decided we would hang out online and talk about the Wheel of Time. And, uh, you know, after a couple of years of doing that, we had some people just start saying they liked our show it was really weird it was a weird uh, sensation but you know uh and then uh andrew uh my my compatriot here is really involved in all kinds of things things that would shock and surprise you but for good reasons um because andrew is just one of those people who uh is always on the lookout for the next big thing uh he's always got oh, i thought we were talking about my other show for a second i got scared. incredible ideas no no i'll let you talk about that no, no, I don't want. <laughs> well, no, but, uh, yeah. So no, we have a lot of fun. Uh, Black Tower podcast is we talk about the wheel of time. Uh, we we like to talk about things from the perspective of the Black Tower, but also just kind of play around with some different theories and different uh, fun that we have with the different subjects. Which is why we're actually. I mean, I I think I can speak for both of us, but I can definitely speak for myself when I say I'm really excited to be here and talk about uh, tonight's topic because it, it's a really fun one. Yeah, now I want to know what this other show is, Andrew. <laughs> oh, uh, so it's it's an after dark show, onlytaints.com. And for the change that you can find in your couch, you can figure it out. Okay, that's. I think that's enough. <laughs> can't, wait hear, can't wait to hear somebody be like, I tried to find Only Taints and I couldn't find it anywhere. It's crazy. Oh, I'm sure Only Taints is somewhere. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to. I don't know. Someone's going to Google Only Taints and it's not going to be pretty. That's all. <laughs> that's what I just did. And I was. There's an OnlyFans page page called Taint. 
FBI is going to be next, knocking at your door. Yeah. The <laughs> next one is Butter Wellness, and uh, that's where I draw the line. Only fans, <laughs> and then Butter Wellness, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Oh man. So Josh, you mentioned the topic. We're we are going to be talking about a really good topic. It was something that we started to talk about in one of our earlier episodes, and we we put a pin in it because we wanted to spend a whole episode talking about it, and we wanted to bring some guests on to talk about it because I was really interested to hear what other people have to think. Um, it's about one of the characters from the books and the TV show. And what's so interesting about this character is that they've been using him very differently in the show than in the books. Um, so we want to talk about that and try to come up with some thoughts and ideas about what we think is going to happen with this character in season three. Uh, this is the uh, creepiest dark friend himself, Padden Fane, played by the uh, uh, equally creepy Johan Meyer. Okay. <laughs> Before we even like start talking about like things that happened in the book, I'd love to get uh, Josh, your and Andrew's thoughts on the actor and how, like what kind of a job you thought he did, Johan Meyer as Pad and Fate. And was that your head cannon? Uh, well, I, I love I love what he's doing uh, with Pad and Fate. I, I think it's it's absolutely perfect, dude. He's absolutely killing it. Um, but it's it's not my head cannon because I not in a bad way. Um, I, I was used to like some of the the kind of fan art and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I was expecting this like really like kind of uh greasy, oily looking, shady dude, really unclean, no suave to him whatsoever. And then, and then Johan showed up and actually gave some swagger to Pat and Fane. And uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's and it totally not an yeah, totally different. Uh, portrayal with the swag you're at swagger that's the perfect word for it but yeah he's so much cooler than like you i could see myself hanging out with johan meyer that's <laughs> pat and fane maybe maybe it seems like he's like he's the pat and fane that you would hang out with and then get away and be like that was fun and five seconds later be like what no that was a mistake why did i do it <laughs> and then he'd call you up the next day and say hey we're going out drinking again right and you're like, absolutely yeah let's go Regret it every night. Regret it right afterwards. God, I oh, can't yeah. even argue with that. That's so accurate. Everyone's got a friend like that, though. I liked the show Pat and Fane so far. I, I have to say, I, I do think book Pat and Fane had some swagger, but not like real swagger. I feel like he had like you know how there's like middle school kids try and tell these like really outlandish stories to elementary school kids to be like look how impressive I am that that's that was kind of the swagger I pictured Pat on Fane having in the books mm -hmm. like he'd come into the two rivers and be like aha let me tell you of war because <laughs> he liked being the guy and then Tom Marilyn's like yeah that happened like months ago yo. you're not that guy uh I and I I really loved I really loved how Johan Myers kind of well okay I will say this uh my favorite thing about his introduction in the TV show, which I feel like fit the book introduction as well, because everybody looked forward to him arriving in the two rivers because everybody needed things that he had on his cart. And I could, you know, it, it, just like in the music, man, it's the Wells cargo wagon coming down the street and everybody's excited about it. And they did a great job on the TV show of turning it into like a Gandalf. Yeah introduction you know yeah, but the children, the children fireworks, yeah. do fireworks. <laughs> only this time they're asking for sweetie sticks and this should be and a picture man who wore it better like, gandalf's oh, wagon no, or pet and, <laughs> and knowing how sort of like righteous gandalf is versus how just wholly evil put on fane is that was a really eerie introduction and i loved it <laughs> i was I mean, watching i'm sorry I was just like, if you go off a metric of who has more people immediately run up to them when they get in the area, Ed and Fane's beaten Gandalf. I mean, he had a bunch <laughs> yep. of kids run up to him. him. Gandalf had like one lone hobbit. So. <laughs> no, he had like four or five kids. Nah. Yeah, there were. Yeah, there, there were a couple were of kids. Yeah, yeah, they came up looking for the fireworks, and and then remember he did a little out the back. Yeah, yeah got, like later yeah. on, but initially it was just Frodo in the room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like yeah. that initial, like yeah. you're in the bounds uh, of the area. I was gonna say I was watching the first episode again, and uh, when they're all dancing, like right before the Trollocs show up, you just see him watching them with like this smile on his face. Yes. Like he just knows what's about to happen, and he's just so happy about it, and it's so creepy. 
Oh yeah, he said. Yeah, I love him. I think he's. I think he's really good. And you could see him like even in the conversation he has with Matt, like where he tries to sell him the bracelet. You could see him turn like where he's like acting really nice, and then he's like, "All right, come over here," and like his whole like yeah. demeanor changes, like even in that scene. Yeah, who <laughs> yeah. yeah. around? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I I liked him. It's very different than like like you said, Josh, my or Andrew, my head canon of him, how I pictured him in the books. But it works. Um, what he's doing with the character. There's a lot of different things happening though that they're that they've changed, or we don't know if they're going to be working on or, or putting into the show. Like, so right, they they use the whistle, which I thought was really cool in the first season. And that I don't know, did we hear the whistling in the second season at all? Do you guys remember hearing it? I, I don't. Think did we so. hear it a little bit in the first scene, like when we see him? I I think the whistle is something they abandoned, and that's really? actually something I'm kind of sad about because I loved it. I, I thought. It was I thought it was amazing. I love in the first time you see him when he's riding in, it like transitions from the mer because you see the merge roll, and it's like part of the music, and then it like transitions to him whistling the same tune. It's such yeah. a good like yeah, it's such a good cue. Like every time you're like, oh, I hear that. Like, what does that mm -hmm. mean? And they and they used it in Shadow Loga. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. no, yeah. he was there. So I want to get. I mean, we've talked about, uh, Jen, we've talked about this, Mordeth. I don't know what the two of you think. Like, mm -hmm. you think they just have totally abandoned the whole Mordeth thing? Like, do you think something happened to Fane and Shadow Logoth that's going to come up later or have some sort of effect on him later? Honestly, I, I think I think a, a lot of the character shifts or, or personality shifts or aliases or whatever you want to call it that we wind up seeing Pat and Fane deal with and go through, I, I think that those are going to not really be reflected in the TV show. Just for simplicity state sake, um, I think it's stuff that plays out really well in the books where you have, you know, eight hundred pages if you want to over the over the course of like seven books to detail how pattern fame changes. Or, you know, do two hundred pages here and then nothing for three or four books and then yeah, you know, fifty pages. I mean, but um I don't think it I don't think it'll translate as easily into the TV show without being more confusing than it gives a benefit to the show that's a good point well yeah. in the personality shift right the personality kind of disorder i guess if you want to say it is is a direct result of the possession or, or the the taint if you will of shadar logoth right so where they've changed the rules on that I feel like they're changing the rules on a fundamental piece of Padan Fane. And so kind of what Andrew touched on is it, it would have to make sense. There would have to be a reason for him to have all the kind of different accents and personalities. And they've kind of taken that reason away. Yeah. I mean, he still had the dagger, so he's got that... But you know what's weird? We we didn't see any kind of weird like connection, like you know, with the black stuff coming out of his mouth. Yeah, that with Pad and Fate. He doesn't seem to be affected by the dagger at all. Like he was he right it before he had to give it up to Matt. Like right? Didn't he like look at it kind of like reluctantly giving it to Matt? But it seems pretty okay with it. Does he have the connection to it? I don't even know. Well, and and this is where I was going with the whole changing of the rules, like. And again, this isn't me like, you know, complaining or anything like that. This is me straight up stating a fact. They they yeah. changed the rules on Shadar Logoth. They changed the rules on the dagger. Um I the, the the simple fact of the matter is we don't know. We don't know what kind of effects it's gonna have. As we've seen, we've got two, I guess, dagger bearers. One of them is Matt, one of them is Pot and Faith. We see Matt carrying it for a couple of months, and he's almost insane right he's he yeah. he's sick in bed he wants to kill everything he's super paranoid uh he is the book definition of the dagger you know what we what we ascribe to the behaviors of those affected by the 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 the, the tainted shadar logoth yeah but pat and fane seems to uh like was said before seems to kind of be not really affected by that he's he's cool with it he's like yeah matt can have the dagger like I don't care if it is Ishamael telling you that if you're under the control of the dagger, you're going to be holding onto the dagger more because Ishamael told you that. Yeah. Which is book definition. But obviously, TV show definition and book definition, 
are different and they haven't really fleshed that out at least not that i'm aware of yeah i it was weird like i thought he would have been more and he ran away too right like when matt escapes out of that room he's like he sees him with the dagger on the stick and he's like uh, i'm out of here yeah guards damn dagger on the stick <laughs> dagger by itself i can handle it put that on a stick with a piece you of bed sheet did he tie it wow. did he tie it on a stick i'm out I got I got the feeling from the show that like uh the Patton Fane eyed it more for like its value and potential power. I mean it being something that one of the Forsaken is expressly being like ordering him to move in a certain way, that's gonna carry some intrinsic value. And yeah. I think if nothing else, that that super creepy grin from the Dark Friend yeah. uh, social meeting, I think if nothing else shows like just had in Fane's thirst for power um it's like what i felt because i'm like okay the dude's like trying to scare a kid to show he has some kind of power over something in the situation whenever he knows he has none so i could mm -hmm. see him like wanting the dagger as like because he feels or knows that it has some kind of influence or power and to use it to get more of just what he wants because you no know, it's not like dark friends are known for being selfish and greedy <laughs> not at all what? no 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 not Pat. They would never. <laughs> so I guess the question is, where's the dagger now? Does he get the dagger back? Like, where would the dagger? Where would it go? Or do they destroy the dagger? Is the dagger out of the the show? Do they say, okay, we're done with this dagger. We're not going to do anything else with this. Let's get rid of it. Jen, I'm going to put this to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. Be smart. I mean, the last time Maureen saw the dagger, she literally like they threw like a blanket over it and like nobody would even touch it or go near it like so i i can't see how they'll just be like oh it's all right you have it on a stick now cool no that's that's fine <laughs> like they saw what happened to him last time he had it they didn't really describe like oh you have to touch it with your hand i you know I like it's just that. weird He's i don't not, know I, I agree i don't think matt's gonna keep it but where is it gonna go is fane gonna get the dagger somehow or is it is or Fane even just, gonna be there like like are we just gonna like show up in the two rivers again like where did he go what does so he do I, now is he just peacing out because uh ishamel's gone is Landfear gonna take him over and put tell him to go somewhere you know like i i don't i don't know i hate the dagger i I want to get rid of it i think it's i think we're done I, with the I, dagger. Mean, I have a theory about maybe that. they'll <laughs> try to bring some elements of the great hunt back i don't think they are because now with everything in the same spot they could have pad and fane um yoink the the wine decanter of valir i mean the horn of valir <laughs> and and the dagger and that would kind of like help them answer what i'm sure like viewers of the show are going to ask and like well you have this super powerful horn that summons warriors why don't you use it more often i think the horn well, is gone now though i think they took it back to tell Ron Riyadh with them it's oh yeah just, like that. put it in her cape like this and now it's the gone judge, like, it disappeared so we don't even know where the hell the horn is oh god is it a one-time use thing now yeah well, maybe, yeah or maybe <laughs> like they'll the find balls? it in tell Ron Riyadh or something I, I don't know like the dragon um, balls you use them and then they scatter and turn into stone for a year <laughs> Tom's jumping in here. He has something to say. Tom, Tom, where's the horn? I'm not a fantasy tracker. Oh, okay. You're not. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Tom. One job, Tom. The track the horn of a <laughs> Damn it, Tom. Um, so, so, I, I mean. I've, I've kind of got a theory about this. Okay, go ahead. But, but it all. But I, I offer this caveat in advance. It is, for all intents and purposes, a loony theory, right? We're going to go back to theoryland.com put this right up in the <laughs> loony theory forums and that's where this belongs because there's absolutely zero evidence to support this and there's even more chance that it's probably not going to happen but <laughs> pot on fane gets the dagger back somehow or no no i'm sorry i'm sorry pot on fane does not get the dagger back right but he I'm knows this theory <laughs> you're changing flip-flopping <laughs> right already right right out the gate but he knows that matt has it he knows where Matt's from. So he goes yes. to the two rivers and you know starts doing his evil dance there until someone shows up to stop him, which would probably be Perrin or Matt, probably be Perrin. And once and that'll be sort of Perrin's journey in season three is driving Pot on Fane out of the two rivers where he will go off to something else. I don't know. The problem is I don't 
the reason I put that under a loony theory is I don't know that they're going to have enough time for that. It gets real sort of weird in those situations. You know, I, I just don't know what's going to happen. But I would like to see Pot and Fane going to the two rivers in order to coax a response from Matt to show up so that he could get the dagger back. You know, maybe something happens in the opening of season three where Matt is out of his reach, but he knows if he goes back and tortures everybody, maybe he can invoke some kind of response and draw him back. I just feel like we already have Dane going there to coax a response out of Perrin, so I don't know if... Remember, though, it was an, an alliance of white cloaks and... Yeah, no, he might be yeah. there, but I don't know if they'll rip that... If it, I don't know if he'll just be, like, with the white cloaks. But I don't... That's so weird, because he had, like, no... I don't... How does he even end up with the white cloaks in the book? He just goes he to goes, the... He goes to the Fortress of the yeah. Light and talks to Pedro Nile. But is that is he told to do that? Who? No, no, he's off the rails. Um, okay. Point Pat and Fane. Okay. Yeah, because this is that's after well, after um he kind of absorbs uh more death of Mashkar. Yeah, right. And but he's, he's got like a little more independent. Well, he's got a lot more independence from his 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 bindings to the shadow, but he's been like distilled so many times over to hunt Rand, Matt, and Perrin that he's still hyper focused on that. Yeah, so, I don't I mean, I don't know. All I can see now, though, is him sitting at like a table and it's just like a photo negative of the dark friend social. It's just the people in a bunch of people in white cloaks around the table <laughs> and he just throws the hood back and creepy smiles at somebody again. I, I do Ooh. think it should be mentioned that Pedro Niall resisted Pat and Fane's advances and it wasn't until he was removed from the picture to soft spoilers it. <laughs> that uh the new another person is the one who sent a contingent of white cloaks with so we've got something from chat here uh so in oh no this isn't a uh, damn you gabe i thought it's you were a pretend conversation I, I just realized he's writing fan fiction in the chat yeah he's writing <laughs> he, he, he labeled it season three episode one and i i look quick and i thought it was put like season two episode one and i'm like wait a second this isn't right <laughs> i mean yeah. i think honestly they'll they'll probably just take the magical shield that remained whenever whenever all the heroes disappeared and use it like moraine did the blanket from season one just put it <laughs> over the dagger and we'll never see this carried around in the shield like oh it's it's underneath the magical shield nobody can touch it and then Fane will like pop out of nowhere at the end of the episode and be like Ooh. they could easily have Fane go to like latch on with the white cloaks to go to the two rivers for revenge on matt maybe instead of you know whatever it doesn't matter um i think they can write that in there it's i don't think it's that hard especially like we said we it's pretty clear that dane's gonna be going to the two rivers by the last episode i know that dane thought that Aaron killed his father and in the show he actually did but did <laughs> Did Fane, is Fane the reason that Dane is there? And then he's just mad because of, like, or did he go there, like, for revenge he's against Perrin? He, no, no, he convinces, Fane convinces them that there are dark friends in the two rivers and that they have to go root out the dark friends. And yeah, then he's exactly. just like, Perrin, Perrin. He's just like Perrin and, and then Byers also remember already, like, he knows about. Right, Byer tells Dane that Perrin killed the, his father. But he tell me he killed him, or he's the reason that he died. He's I, I don't know if they I, I don't remember what the exact yeah. Yeah. So I don't know in the show if Dane needs any help getting to the two rivers. Like be clear that, would, that that's where he's headed at the end. That of would it. also make him extremely susceptible to it as well, though. But Fane, but Fane could tag along and say like, "I know the two rivers. I've been there many yeah, times." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do that. I can show right. you the place. Yeah, I exactly. can. I I know the lay of the land and everything like yeah. that. So it, he could. They could use him that way as just like yeah. he's someone who's familiar with the place. Yeah. Um. Right. I could. I could see him doing that now that Ishi's gone. Yeah. And Pat and Fane would be like, "Oh, the guy that's been keeping all the other super powerful bad Ooh. guys at bay and not manipulating me is gone." Maybe it's time to, you know, GTFO, and I'm going to follow the dudes with the fancy white stuff and the, the shiny armor, and uh, we'll go cause some havoc and see if I can finally mess with uh, Matt or, or Perrin. Because I would, it also, I would to me, looks like yeah. Matt right now has a far more valid reason to need or want to return to the Two Rivers because of his sisters. Yeah. yeah. What Perrin doesn't really have any thing to go back to i mean what's he going to go back to like relive memories about an axe in the forge yeah oh no with that time when he killed his wife i think 
Yeah, yeah. I feel like Rand yes. is going to ask Perrin to go back, but I don't know what, like, in the book, he knows that Fane is going there, right, or something? Yeah, Fane goes there, um, and and he has to, like, he's he goes there to draw Rand there. But how Rand does Rand know that he's there? I think they get word. I forget who somebody says something. He finds out, right? And then he does ask yeah. Perrin to go home, right? Because he can't go. Yes. So I think that's what will happen. In they, the show. Yeah. they do the whole right. Is this the one where they get into a fight, right? Perrin. No, and, that's know, when like, he's I, going to. Oh, that's with Masima, right? That's when he goes. Yes, to yes, yes, yes. When they get into a fight, but then it's like a real fight. It becomes <laughs> real, even though it wasn't supposed to be real. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, um, it's good acting. Yeah, no. Good acting. <laughs> um. So, so Fane, let's say Fane goes to the two rivers, right? Because I don't know what else would he, where else would he go? I, could, I can't even think of where else he would go. He wouldn't yeah. go to the waste, right? Would he go to Tanchico? God. Yeah. I, I think it makes sense. In Tanchico, as it were. Yeah. yeah maybe <laughs> they got, they could also, um, no, sorry. What I was going to say is if he goes to the two rivers, right? We were talking, on our Slayer episode, and that's where this whole came about, right? Because they have a character supposedly cast as Lord Luke, or we saw the script, right? That one of the leaked audition scripts had Lord Luke in there, right? Slayer is sent to the Two Rivers to kill Padden Fane. So do you think, I don't know, do you think they're going to put that in there? Or is that going to be too confusing? Like, yeah, Perrin's going to Two Rivers because the White Cloaks are there, and Fane goes with the White Cloaks because he doesn't like the boys and then slayer this other guy goes to there to kill fane and fane wants to kill parrot i don't know does it get too messy <laughs> just benny hill music indoors of everybody yeah. somebody else <laughs> jumps in there yeah she gets in there somehow and everybody in the show is like who's this i'm just hey. thinking the benny hill it's always there's always at the end it's always women in, in bikinis right that, um, is, that is true that is, that is the thing that they did always uh, different times people I don't know because, like, yeah, in the books, Finn Fane's entire thing uh, is is convincing Pedro Nail to send the White Cloaks to Amon's Field in hopes to pull to pull Rand out. And Rand mm. is like, "I'm too important to go home ever because I'm doing other things that are more important." And that's why he sends Aaron. Yeah, he's like, "Look, they're expecting me to go." He, he tries to make it sound like it's important. In reality, he's just scared to go home. Uh, with, you know, fair enough. The last time he saw people from home, they kind of freaked out. But um, I don't really, neither neither way of that makes sense. Honestly, it almost makes the most sense, I still think, given how they've set up the TV show thus far, to have Matt be the one that goes back to Two Rivers if there's a threat against, like, a Mons field. Yeah. They didn't they didn't really yeah. leave much for any of the other characters to really have an emotional bond to home like they did with Matt. Like from the very start, Matt's got a massive emotional bond with his sisters in the show. Yeah. That's a good so, point. So I don't know if maybe they're gonna do that and try to bring about a certain band with hands that are red. Uh or maybe oh do God. it like that to give it more of a tie to where that group was originally from way way back in the day you know that's not a bad and set up matt to fight Air, uh to fight um pat and fane after pat and fane absorbs uh eridol's sin and so you can do that whole call back of now we're fighting each other because my great 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 ancestor was betrayed by <laughs> her fusion weird shadow thingy great 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 ancestor who, who knows fusion ha that's so that's so odd it, it, but it, it makes sense though that's like that's so far from the books but it makes perfect sense like you can put that in there and people who didn't read the books would would not notice anything the, the, don't get me wrong the, that's not what i want to see happen yeah the the fun thing about this is you've got you know we've got a real interesting challenge here because you know the showrunners have you know eight episodes eight one hour episodes and when you take away you know credits and blah, which i did notice in season two um, they did. They did not do an intro, you know, for the credits. Basically, it was yeah. "Wheel of Time." So I, I'm grateful that the showrunners, you know, obviously recognize that they have a, a vastly uh, way too extreme time condensation that they mm -hmm. can't get around. There's 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 not a lot of tricks that they can use to get around that. So. You know, we're going to be combining things. We're going to be cutting things. 
we're going to be doing all kinds of things to make all these books fit <laughs> into eight episodes. Like it, it's just not it's just not feasible. So when we start talking about you know what's going to happen in the future, I mean anything could happen. Yeah. I mean, Pot and Fame could go visit the Aiel and and. <laughs> Patton goes to Radeon. Who knows? Who saw it? I think I suggested Patton Fane. It goes undercover as Hadden and Kadir. Lanfear, Asmodian, and Patton Fane, who's actually Hadden and Kadir. Now, Lanfear takes control of them or tries to take control of them now that Ashamayel's dead. Yeah, and then they grab Asmodian and they go. I don't know how they hook up, but I'll say. I'm sorry. Uh, Paul Cassidy is not cast in this yet because I think Paul Cassidy would make a really great Robin or Asmodian. Who's Paul he Cassidy? He's an actor. Uh, he was in. Hold on, I gotta pull it up now because you asked me that, and even though I said it, I wasn't uh, prepared to answer it. <laughs> the Sandman. Is it the guy who plays the Sandman? Yes. No. Yes. Well, he's in the Sandman. He plays pub visitor. Who was he? In a one oh. we know, he was Charlie oh. Crap. Chaplin in Holmes and Watson, the one with uh, John C. Riley and Will Ferrell. You know, I just had another uh, okay. idea, completely separate from Paul Cassidy. Um, what if, what if they have Pat and Fane go to a Monsfield and either kidnap or um, unalive Matt's family, oh uh, his sisters? Terrible, <laughs> terrible thing for anybody to do. But this is Pat and Fane we're talking about. And then Pat and Fane essentially rushes through, goes by Shadow Logoth, and essentially just jumps forward into his um, Jeral Mordeth arc. Because that would put him in and manipulating around Kyrian, where the band originally forms in the books. Yes, right? So when he... So that's after the two rivers, and, and he goes to the White Tower, right? He goes to Kyrian with the, with the rebels... With uh, what's his yeah. name? Uh, Ri- 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 Riatin. 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 Yeah, I see Riatin. Oh yes. Um, and that's when that's when he stabs Rand with the dagger. Oh, and the Rand- fa- the fog. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That's when all that happens. So now Rand's already been stabbed <laughs> with the dagger and has the dagger wound. So it doesn't seem like we're gonna get another. Well, at least another dagger wound. Yeah. But now there's no Ishamael wound for the two wounds to kind of resist each other. Maybe it'll just be like dagger wound redux. I'll just get another one at a slightly different angle. <laughs> or in the yeah. same spot. Not again. Yeah. No, that <laughs> X marks up, the spot dragon. You bring up an interesting point. Like, are we to expect that the second wound will happen in season three? Or are we to expect that there will be no wound? That's the question that we don't know the answer to. I mean, so I guess play, playing along that line, right, going down the road, right, that's what gives him the idea to, spoiler alert, cleanse the taint on how to cleanse the taint, right? Um, it's the two different wounds are kind of like repul- repulsing each other, or repelling each other. Um, and that's, I think, right how he comes up with his idea how to cleanse the taint, that he'll use the, the, the evil shadow Logoth with, to, like, repel the taint off of the one power i guess like like a magnet kind of reverse magnet so do they even care about that in the show like obviously he'll probably cleanse the taint in the show right but do they need to go into like the metaphysics of it right hopefully i know i, mean, I know we hope so josh but do you think they took gonna- away my favorite piece of foreshadowing for it so it took away like the book eye of the world which um was like mm-hmm. half of the equation or at least a quarter of the equation Whenever Rand was sitting there, like brooding and contemplating how to fix the situation, because um, he was like, "Okay, well, if I got to siphon it all off, how could I do that?" And eventually, he's like, "Oh, that's how they created the Eye of the World." And he's like, "Well, I can't just siphon it off and let it go into the into the you know nature. I, you know, I can't like do a, a Valdez natural disaster with the taint on Sidine. So he's like, "Where am I going to throw it? Oh, let's go ahead and throw it in a place that nobody wants to go to anyway." Carry it. Oh, I mean, no. be. <laughs> right. Depending on what you like to read, it could also be Camelin. You know, if you get really bored with politics, that's true. <laughs> they they can cut out the whole Lane Succession storyline, oh, right? Just, yeah. just wipe out Camelin. Get a bath for you. It really, really changes the bath scenes. Bathe somewhere else. There's plenty of Land. 
That she <laughs> Sorry, <can't> your <laughs> highness. <laughs> the milk is tainted. Goat's milk. Goat's milk. Nothing's worse. I don't know. I, just, um, I don't know how they're gonna do it. Like now, it's making me worry because like the the whole Battle of the Two Rivers entire event, like that's pivotal for Perrin's character development moving mm-hmm. forward, at least in the books. Mm-hmm. And other than it being something like the White Cloaks moving against uh, Two Rivers and Rand finding out, be like, we can't leave our home alone, Perrin. You're level headed. You can probably go and deal with it. Other than that being the way it goes, like none of the characters except for Matt seem to really have a good motive to go home. Yeah, that's a really good point that you brought up before. And I didn't even think about that. Like, like that Matt has the most connection and reason to want to go home because of his sisters, where in the book he's like, he never wants to go home. Yeah. Um, and it's already been established in his character that he really cares about his sisters and he doesn't trust his parents <laughs> as well. So, um, yeah, so then and then Perrin's got this huge trauma that he's experienced at home now, and now he's gonna go back. I mean, that I guess this is how he's going to face that that guilt and I guess you know, come to terms with it. Um, so we can stop having him sulk around about this. Um, he goes with the an axe destroyed his marriage, and now an axe might destroy his home. <laughs> oh, sh- <laughs> Very brutal way of phrasing it, but is just, indeed like just don't pick up an axe again tv show parent just don't pick it up every time you touch an axe something bad happens uh-huh. <laughs> he's I mean, well, yeah he's he right. has over two now it's got two murders Aaron's just a bad dude in the tv show he just murders people <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly redeeming moment of oh he showed me his name it's hopper and then like bam he was a guy that thought he was just saving somebody else from random wildlife good job buddy good job um so Pat and Fane does go through the ways that we know, right? In the first season and in the books, there's his interaction with like Match and Shin, where I think, I think they say like, it's, it actually Match and Shin like tries to whatever devour him, but kind of spits him back out almost um, because he's so fucking evil from Shadow <laughs> Roga. And that Match and Shin actually gets an aspect of his character in, in its, um, in its lust for Rand. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because right, because then later on when Rand tries to use the ways, like Match and Shin's like waiting for him. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think they're gonna do any of that, but um, we haven't even seen like any anything with Pad and Fane that would suggest that he's been affected by Match and Shin or that. I don't know. I feel like we haven't seen any kind of supernatural um, aspect to no. his character at this point. And I don't know. Do you think they're gonna make him a little bit more supernatural where he has kind of weird powers like he does in the books, right? He can sense dark friends or tell people who are dark friends, right? And can he like basically touch people and cause them pain, like horrible pain and stuff like that? I, I feel like they have to, right? I feel like they have to do something with him. He we okay, so we do know we do get confirmation that he traveled the ways because I, I mean, I don't like when 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 production companies do this, um, but I recognize that it's a staple in in you know TVs and movies. Like Hollywood just loves to do this, where they don't tell you anything in the actual production of the show. Um, but in the bonus material, in the you know merchandising, somewhere along the way they'll drop the the truth of the situation, right? In this particular case, Padan Fane uses the ways to get to, um, you know, Tarwin's Gap to steal the horn, blah, blah, blah. And we don't, at this point in time, TV show watchers will only recognize the ways as something that can be accessed via the one power. You have to use the one power to open the gate, and it, that's great. Well, there is a still of Padan Fane holding a trefoil leaf and just kind of yes. like hey that's cool never made it into the show yeah and yeah it did no it's not in the show it's not in the show it was like whenever he's walking away from the waygate yeah you he, see like, him walking and he like he like kind of tosses it in his hand and puts it in his pocket as he walks towards falma was that one of the deleted scenes or was that a deleted scene? I know you see him walking out like from the back, like you see his shoes or something, but I don't yeah. know about I didn't he's, know you, you saw the, the trefoil I, leaf in that scene. Yeah, he's he's got the leaf like a key in his hand and he kinda like tosses it like a coin and puts it in his pocket and walks towards Falma. Really? 
I don't remember. That I don't remember that either. I don't remember. Do not that. trust my memory. I could have just like completely. <laughs> that was a fever dream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's holding I'm the leaf in the promo. Leaf. Yeah, um, y'all talk. I'm gonna go find out. <laughs> Somebody in Discord might already have it out, but um, but yeah, there's that still. You don't see that shot, Josh. That's the still you're talking about the photo yeah, yeah, that yeah. they posted on the on their uh, on their uh, PR site or something like that. And I think Rafe also answered a question about that. Like somebody had, you know, one of his like Twitter Q and A's and he said like the one power is not the only, he like confirmed that it's not the only way to open the way gate. Um, yeah. So yeah, I agree with you there. I guess that's what I was getting at. <laughs> um, I want to go back to Slayer because we, we have Lord Luke, but we think we have Lord Luke cast uh, Slayer, Padden, Fane, Perrin, and the white cloaks all in there um together i don't remember does anyone remember in the books who sends slayer to kill Padden fane because somebody sends him right he doesn't oh no does no the dark one himself right i think we talked about this in the slayer episode jen right i think the dark one he goes yeah, to show the dark one tells him to go kill pad and fane um so i would love to see that in the show <laughs> yeah first glimpse of shia ghoul maybe or, or is it too early I don't know. That is a lot going on, like you said before. It's like, like why is the Dark One killing Pad and Fane? Because he's gone. Oh, yeah, he hasn't gone off he the hasn't, I mean, oh. unless he does now, but that, it's kind of just like a normal dark really friend. To establish that, yeah. yeah. Maybe one of the other Forsaken sends him. Maybe he's not a supernatural, you know, two merged being that can walk through the dream world and the waking world like that. Who Slayer are you talking about? Yeah, maybe he's just a jerk off lord in the two rivers that eventually <laughs> He has to be in Teleron Riyadh in the Wolf Dream. <laughs> all I heard, all I heard, maybe there's nothing special about the guy. Maybe he's just a jerk. <laughs> I, I, I love that. That's my new headcanon. Maybe so he's just some jerk off lord. It could be. you even saying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lord jerk off. That's good. <laughs> Lord <laughs> jerk off. <laughs> no, you know, you know, as 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 book readers will know, Pat and Fane plays such a vast role. You know, he's that he's that. I'd, I'd be willing to say, you know, he's the equivalent of like the Klingon Empire in in old Star Trek, right? They he shows up every once in a while just to piss everyone off just to stir up some controversy and conflict and then disappears again for a season. Like he's that guy. And so far they've done a good job of portraying him as an evil bastard, but not as a particularly ambitious one. Yeah. Any sense. Yeah, you're right. He's just kind of, he is just a Shamael's lackey at this point, right? Yeah. He's not, he hasn't shown any other, I mean, he, he wants to kill Rand, right? Doesn't he offer Shamael to kill Rand? And then he's like, no, no. Yeah. Like, you, you go take care of Matt. You deal with him. I got Rand. Um. So, yeah, he just appears to be a lackey at this point. But now his master's gone. I don't know. Like, is the, is he connected to the dagger? Is he going to go after? I mean, that's the other thing that could he could do, right? If he's still connected to the dagger and Matt takes the dagger with him, which I don't think is going to happen. It, wherever the dagger goes, is that where Fane's going to go maybe? And then where where would the dagger go at this point? Like, I, I don't even know. Does he get it back or does they try to hide it somewhere? Yeah, we don't really know because at the end of season two, you know, when there's the Avengers assemble moment, they're standing at the top of the, the, the tower I don't think we get a good answer as to where that dagger is at that point. It's just sitting on the ground up on the tower, yeah. right? They pulled it, Rand pulls it out of him, and it just sits there. Yeah. So that, yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. That'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, let's see. So, like you said, Moraine picks it up with, uh, or Land picks it up right with the cloth in the first season. So yeah. if they, he's gonna have to steal it back. What what else is Fane gonna do? Like, if he doesn't get the dagger back, what's Fane gonna? What is his role gonna be in the story? I don't even know. Like, I feel like it's gonna be so different from the books. Well, and therein lies the struggle because Pattern Fane, I feel, represents a a uh, a, a third of the sort of trifecta of combatants in this story. 
You've got Rand and the Forces of the Light. You've got Ashamayel and Morden and the Forces of the Shadow. And then you've got Pot and Fane and the Forces of, you know, Shail Ghoul and that sort of, that evil sort of cloud. And he, he is sort of the face for that. You know, he represents that. And where they've kind of played with that, they've kind of changed that up a little bit. You know, we do have a valid sort of, okay, what's happening with that? What's, what's, what's the deal with that? And I, we don't have a really good answer for that yet. No, it's it's driving me insane, Josh. Um, <laughs> I'm so curious as to. We what just they're... need season three to get here. We just season three now. I, I need to know what they do with Pat and Fane, whether it's good or bad, or I like it or I don't. I just need to know. Instead <laughs> of Serenity, now it's season three now. Andrew, how how you doing over there? Have you found anything? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. You don't actually see it in the. Uh... <laughs> okay. I well, must have dreamed that part. I mean, obviously, there's a scene of him walking away, and I could have swore. Uh, I guess I just superimposed that behind-the-scenes image or the cut image or the Photoshop image into it. Because it seemed like such a simple thing. They could have just added in to add depth to the way gate. Yeah. Could have. Could have, would have, should have. Mm. I, you almost had me convinced, too, Andrew. I was like, did he put something <laughs> in the air? And I just didn't make the connection. Bro, no, I, was, I was so convinced. Because as we were talking about it, I'm like, I can see it. I know what I'm, I know it was there. And I went back and found it. And I'm like, all right, she's, cool. She's, Good job, Brian. You. you know, that's that's the problem, you know, with uh, – in, in, Andrew is playing the long game because he started out by saying Pat and Fane has swagger, and that's exactly what he was doing. He was inceptionizing us from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Andrew. Planting well, the seed in our in our minds. Um I'm just here yeah. to sow discourse and uncertainty. There's <laughs> plenty of that here. Plenty of that. Like, oh, here. you you didn't see that scene? Oh. <laughs> it must have been uh the, the one one scene that we got, I guess. Oh yeah, that scene. <laughs> the one that they gave you guys ahead of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A three second Black Tower exclusive of having <laughs> a trefoil leaf key. <laughs> don't don't tell them about the other scenes, Andrew. Well, it Those sounds like it's secret. Secret, so. Um, what oh, you mean the one with uh, Ishi and the Trollocs in the in the hot tub? Yeah, that one. Don't tell them about that one. That's it the could be warmer. Two. He's just hungry. <laughs> I would just love it if you see like they're in the hot tub, or or you know, not like a, and you just see like bubbles come up, and like one of the Trollocs is like, you know, it looks like was me. Like, all right, listen, listen. There's a lot of repercussions for these changes down the road. That's all I'm saying, right? If Padden Fane yeah. doesn't get the like Padden Fane's gotta get the dagger back, I think, because but but then like like he doesn't need to stab Rand because Rand's already been stabbed with the dagger. Right. Um I mean, do we get his demise at the end, like in the in the last book where spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't finished the series, where he stabs Matt with the dagger and he thinks Matt's dead? But Matt's like, oh, I guess you can't kill. It's like Matt's a been inoculated. <laughs> yeah, you got inoculated from it. I don't. Yeah, you, uh, you didn't get your Aridol vaccine. It Aridol sounds like a vaccine too. Yeah. So anti vaxxers Are you feeling Aridol vaccine? Are you feeling nervous that your neighboring nations will try to seize all of your wealth? <laughs> try Aridol. It does sound like some sort of drug product, of course. Um, <laughs> 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 like when Noman Garden said, please ask your wisdom if Aridol is right for you. <laughs> I'm inoculated oh. today. <laughs> oh, amazing. That was great. <laughs> I have I don't I don't know. Like you have to give the dagger a purpose moving forward if you're going to have Pat and Fane steal it and, and move forward it. Because yeah. like in the books, the, the dagger had so much purpose for uh for three books. Um or two books yeah two in in the first part of the next book because it was directly tied to matt and matt's well-being it doesn't necessarily seem to be the case here unless like maybe the stick isn't enough to protect him from his shiny new tainted lightsaber like dagger mm -hmm. um so maybe that's how it's going to kind of be reintroduced because i know in, when moraine kind of separates it from him, says like oh if he touches it again that's it he's gone he's done Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll try to go that route with Matt and give him even more of a dark, broody, questionably evil kind of arc. And they're like, the only way to save Matt is to go and uh, get the dagger back from from Pat and Fane. I don't, I don't know. That seems a little too convoluted. 
Yeah, I think I agree. I think he is as much as I was against it. I think he is already fully healed from the dagger, and I think this it proved it at the end of um, episode eight last season that he's totally healed. We're not going to get like another healing ceremony like we did in the books. Yeah. Um, and I think Fane is going to steal the dagger and leave Fom. I guess similar, like you said, to the Great Hunt. Although they kind of did that already, but still, it'll just be the, the beginning of every episode of every season. Or there's just got to be a, a moment in every season where Fane steals something and leaves. But if Fane steals it, then they're just gonna be okay. Got it now, no. I guess. Well, they don't need to go after it. Like, there's no. They go after it in the Great Hunt in the books because they needed to heal Matt. I know, but that's the whole reason they all go. I know you said that we think that Lord Luke has already been cast, but I just had a thought, and hear me out. What if Padan Fane is that character now? Oh, wow. That would fit the multiple personalities thing, and it would give him a reason to go to Two Rivers, and it would give him another reason to be completely and totally unhinged. Like, it, it I hate it, but it kind of fits. That's wild. Um, so Fane emerges and becomes Slayer. So Fane is, they merge Fane and Slayer's characters. Yeah. Really. Oh, my God. It's fucking weird. But Fane the merges shadow. with Luke? Is that what I had a looking at Ad and Fane, Slayer and Lord Luke and Masadar. And like, we can rebuild them better, stronger, <laughs> more evil. <laughs> they like Voltron and form the head. In the game, I almost spit my rum out. <laughs> Our powers combined, he is the ultimate evil. Luke in the it's- screen in the sheet. <laughs> Makes me think about another Dragon Ball Z reference. It's like Cell, like absorbing different things to become perfect. So you have Pat and Fane. He absorbs Mashadar and becomes imperfect or semi-perfect, whatever. Absorbs Slayer, and he's getting closer there. And eventually, he just gets like morphed into Shadar Haran. Oh he's just, just more of him. Stop it! He just Stop starts it. absorbing other evil things into his and body. This ain't even my final form. Yeah, <laughs> I introduce new characters whenever you can just morph into new characters. <laughs> Saves them on actors, right? Hey, man. They can just they can just give him all the parts and use the same actor. Could you imagine Shadar Haran with that Pat and Fane swagger <laughs> and smile? <laughs> and smile. Just you know, you walk into the room thinking you're hot shit, and you like say something offhand to the Murdral, and it's just Pat and Fane throwing back the hood, smiling at you, <laughs> and that creepy smile, like, oh, yeah. you done, you done messed up, AA Ron. Oh my god, that's bizarre, and I kind of—I don't know. Like sometimes, sometimes I want them to make bizarre changes like this just because it seems fun. Um, some sometimes they make changes that are so weird that I don't—I I, kind of like them. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that. I might actually enjoy it if they did something crazy like that. They just keep having them absorb other characters as the show goes on, like, but literally absorb them, not just like metaphorically absorb them. <laughs> If you guys are doing Watt squares, you know, like football squares, like put me down for Pat and Fane becomes Slayer. There's, <laughs> there's one other thing that Pat and Fane does in the books in, I think it's the Shadow Rising that we didn't talk about yet. And he has an interaction with a character that we know is going to be introduced in season three. And that is Elida, right? He goes to uh, the White yeah. Tower before the coup, right? It's right be- Is it right before the coup or is it after the coup? I think he goes he goes before the coup and then the gets coup. Swan Sanche tosses him out on his ear, but he's able to get Elida's attention or someone else's. No, it's Elida. He meets with Elida. That's why I can't remember if it was before or after the coup. Um okay. and there's trying to, rem- trying to find it. Yeah, I don't remember. And it's like very it's there's not much it's not like they spend a lot of time on it in the books. It's just like a short little blurb, I think, about it. And I think he's there trying to convince her to pose Rand, right? Doesn't he get the dagger too, from the? That's that's when he gets kill somebody yeah. and the. Yes, that's how he gets it back. Yeah. Right. I mean, they could do that. They could send the tower back to the. They could send the dagger back to the tower, but then Padden Fane's there. He gets the dagger, talks to Lida, then goes to the two rivers. And, that's a lot. Yeah, I think it's too much. Oh yeah, because this is where like he he's already got the dagger, and he like actually touches Elida with the dagger. He does? Yeah. And he talks small scene in the pain POV in a child. He talks about Elida, Nile, and something along the lines of successfully brushing a little of what he brought out of Shadar Logoth on them. And now they would never trust Rand. Uh, like, 
I think he He's just like, means like trying to infect him. Yeah, I think he just means like he has that like kind of like a worm tongue type deal, right? Where he kind of mm. influences people, because that's the whole history of um, Mordeth, right? Didn't Mordeth um, his kind of like evil kind of rubbed off on people, so to speak? Like it, yeah, it's no, not like yeah, that was the whole idea. Yeah, and it, it's not like he's just like convincing them. He literally like kind of infects them a bit, which I don't even remember that they mentioned that Andrew and that makes a lot I didn't either so just now I'm looking at it and um shout out to I guess Dragon Mount um well not I guess I mean that's the site that I'm on and it's where it's uh that's where it's, you know where Fane touches Elida with a dagger which pokes a whole problem with me and my view of Elida being like oh she's terrifying because she's evil just to be evil and she still kind of is but if it's Elida already being greedy and kind of like not a good person, mm-hmm. and then Fane like imparts a little bit of the the Mashadar mental corruption on her, that kind of like accentuates all the worst parts of her. Mm-hmm. Then I mean, it kind of makes everything Elida do not necessarily her fault, and I really don't like that idea. <laughs> yeah, it definitely puts a twist on that. I think we're gonna have to go back and study that uh, another day because. That's interesting. Like I always remember it like being very short, like the interaction with the two of them and not much said about it. So now I want to go back and read that because no, wow. who was it that was who's Elida's uh keeper of the chronicles? Alviarin. Alviarin. And Alviarin, I think, is who arranged that, wasn't it? Um she definitely arranged for him to be able to go down to the show because she talks to him when he kills and accepted she talks to him and says well she was wasn't supposed to be down here she was supposed to be doing what she was told to do which is not be down here so i feel like yeah there i think there was a lot that happened there in just a small amount of time yeah i always just remember it being very small because i can never remember like what the interaction was just that he was trying to you know get her to oppose rand which which i think was also what he was doing when he meets with Pedro Nile, he's just trying to like put people against her end. But I don't think, I don't know. I don't think they can fit an interaction between him and Elida in the TV show. And I don't think they really need to. Um, it's kind it was kind of unmemorable clearly because none of us can remember what happened except for Andrew. So I'm, I'm going to say they don't put that in there. Although we get Elida, it, it would be cool, but yeah, too much. Well, hold on though. Matt wants nothing to do with the dagger at the end of season two. So who picks it up? Aes Sedai. Where does it end up? The tower. Yeah. It is possible that Pot and Fane goes to the tower and not the two rivers. Oh, so he's in that storyline and he's part of the tower coup. Yeah. He's part of the corruption of the tower, the corruption of Elida. Hmm. Pat and Fane at the tower he's, coup. In 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 the in the TV show, he's very much just a high ranked dark friend at this point. Yeah, so he goes. So, so the dagger goes back to the tower. Fane goes after the dagger. Gets the dagger back. Meets with Elida. Tower coup. He he could meet with her after the tower coup. Also, it doesn't even have to be before it. Could be either. And then he does. I don't know. He's part of that. And then I guess leaves or whatever. Something happens at the end of the season. Um. Yeah. I don't. That could. They could. They could do that. I. I don't think that would be too out there. That's if that's if they do the tower coup at the tower, right? Because yeah. we were talking the other day that right, Swan, Leanne, Bin, Logan are already in Kyrien. Could could they not even make it back to the tower? Could the coup happen while they're out of the tower? And right. then go ahead. I found the dagger thing. So this is chapter twenty eight of uh, Lord of Chaos. Oh, oh wow. Uh, the white cloaks were set hard against dra- the dragon reborn. Bane's lips peeled back in a sneer. Unlikely Niall would have ever supported Althor any more than Elida would have, but it was best not to take too much for granted with Rand bloody Althor. Well, he had brushed them both with what he carried from Aridol. They might possibly trust their own mothers, but never Althor now. Ah, uh, interesting. So, so he yeah, is he like, thought- somehow, whether it was with the dagger or not, and it seems like it is because he's at this point hyper fixated on Rand and the dagger that like 
maybe he used the dagger to just impart a little bit of um think like a uh, loki in the first avengers movie with the uh the uh the, his the spear and he yeah. does all the the the, the bad touching on uh, on people to make them like fight their friend. <laughs> Fane does do some bad touching. Yeah, cuz he even has like they mentioned like later on and and this might be part of it. He just has like an aura about him now like where he influences people just by being around them. Um so. Yeah, he mentions that in this the same chapter in the same POV to, towards the end cuz it's a very short POV for pain, uh for Pat and Fane. And there's like a a child that's giving him information and that he's like basically manipulates the the child's mother oh and yeah like yeah influences her to act certain ways and stuff but does it yeah that's such a kid? he kills the kid at the end of that scene doesn't he does he and i, I feel like he touches the kid and inflicts pain on him like that's that's one of his uh -huh. abilities oh. like he, he can just like him. something he'd do yeah because i remember it being weird because like the way he wrote it he's like he touches the kid and it was like whoa wait a second but not in that way and then he rips. He the does mother. cause pain to the kid. Yeah, he touches him and causes him pain, and then he winds up. I don't, he might kill the kid. I don't remember. But then he goes, I think, and rapes the mother, or it's implied that he already did, he already did rape the mother. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty horrific oh, yeah. stuff. That whole scene. Yeah. So it says Fane had no no notion how to stop one of his tricks once it began. The boy should survive, if a trifle the worse for wear. Once the thing ground to a conclusion, he had not put his whole heart into making it. Okay. Yeah, but so he, he, he was messed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, Pat and Fane's a scary, scary dude. And so far in the TV show, we haven't seen that. We just saw his oh. creepy grin at the little girl. That was the yeah. scariest thing I think he's done. We, he's been a dick. Like, I mean, at winter night when, you know, everybody's dying and he smiles and just walks off. He's been yeah. a dick, but he hasn't been really scary yet so whatever he does two rivers white tower shia ghoul Aya waste i don't care whatever he does i hope they start to bring in that that terror aspect of his character i want to be able to sleep tonight now man this this, <laughs> this whole adam fane elida <laughs> thing has ruined me now <laughs> it's it's literally it's just such one it's like two small lines in the book that like i never I don't ever remember even reading. I uh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Now it's changed. Like I don't remember yeah. even considering that when thinking yeah. about Elida. Yeah. And now it's like, yeah, Elida's still bad, but maybe it wasn't all her fault. I really don't it makes makes my skin crawl thinking that Elida wasn't entirely at fault for being a terrible person. Bad and Fane. He gets us again. That's when we think we figured him out. I mean, she does. She does gain those characteristics. I mean, she had them already, but they do see, seem a little more intensified when she's building the palace for the armor, you know, for herself behind. Like that seems and to be how, like that extra little, you know, help that maybe Pat and Jane gave her. Then how erratic and torturous she is to like the other Aes Sedai after this, like the yeah. slightest hint of failure, and she basically is like, "Time to torture." <laughs> I mean, it's. I, I always attributed it to like the you know the absolute power corrupts absolutely you know ideology and that she just the power just you know was too much for her and she didn't know how to handle it correctly but i i don't know now maybe Patton fane's at fault here <laughs> mordeth the spirit of mordeth rubbing off I'm on her so angry right now <laughs> yeah sorry about that. let's ask tom tom what do you think of Pat and fane showed Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> there you well have spoken, it. Tom. Eloquent and uh, well spoken. As a do you want to ask? Do you want to ask Josh? Ask Tom where Tear is. Tom, where where's Tear? No, Tear is where Tear is. <laughs> there you go. Very, tear is very tear. succinct. Thank you, sir. <laughs> did I did I miss anything? Is there anything else anybody wanted to talk about with Pat and Fane before we wrap it up? <laughs> if a if a strange person shows up at your office. Brandishing a dagger. Don't let them anywhere close. And also, don't take any advice from them. Yes. Yeah. Tom, what do you think about people showing up brandishing daggers? Before we go, I'm going to give you two hobo signs. That's all I have. I think I ran out of time. I want to thank you both, Andrew and Josh, for joining us. Uh, where can people find the Black Tower podcast? Oh, it's a farmhouse right outside of Andor. <laughs> Blacktowerpod.com. Blacktowerpod.com. 
<laughs> got all of our stuff. It's got the Discord, the Patron, the podcast, whatever else we have. All the things. It's everything. All the things. Everything you could possibly need. I'll be sure to put a link in the show notes so just everybody can just click on down there and go check out the Black Tower podcast. If you have not listened to them, go ahead and listen to them. You will not be disappointed. I promise. Peter in uh, Discord, you will, but it'll at least be funny. By the imagery of the Black Tower. Sir, you need to take that down. I want to remind everyone you could follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Join us over in Discord to continue the conversation there. We also post our episodes on YouTube, so go check out our YouTube page and like and subscribe. Rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts and check out our merchandise and Patreon pages to support us that way. Uh, I know everyone's excited. Jordan Con coming up. Are the both of you going to Jordan Con? We will be at the um, Jordan Con. We will we'll be miss there. You. And we will one of y'all you. actually mentioned uh, my cosplay for Jordan Con this episode. Oh. I won't say. I won't. Uh, okay. You can spoil it. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a nice hat you have there. That's all I'm going to say. Lean my head back. It's quite annoying now. You're going to have to you, uh, go watch the YouTube to find out or go to Jordan Con and do what Andrew's dressed up as. Yeah. All the it's a two part. It'll be his first form one day and his yeah. final form the next day. Ah, Dang. I want pictures. Thank you again, Josh and Andrew. Uh, Jen, any last thoughts before I say goodbye to everybody? Um, no. Let's go Yankees. Let's just uh, leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Go Yanks! Thanks everyone for listening, and you'll hear us next time. Bye.